This channel is for educational purposes only. Please do your own due diligence before making any investment decisions. Hi, this is Joe Rabel with Invest Like a Pro. And uh, today I'm going to follow up on the video from last week talking about three time frames. And what I want to do is combine it with an options trade. In other words, I'm going to use three time frames to identify and show you what I was looking at for a recent uh, put trade in options that I did uh, over the last week or two. Uh, I want to give you the uh, the higher time frame, the uh, middle time frame, and then the, the actual trigger time frame. And when I use three time frames, there's really three triggers. Um, and sometimes there's actually two setup time frames. So let's go ahead and get into this and I'll explain uh, what I mean by that. So uh, the stock is, uh, it's actually an ETF, the XLF, which is the uh, select sector for the financials. And um, <clears throat> Again, I use the fourth time frame, the highest time frame, really just to frame out and make sure I have enough room. So if you look at this setup uh, or this specific um, index, it showed support coming in right around the 30 area. OK, so um, I wanted to make sure if we do this trade that we have enough room to 30 um, and I don't mind doing the options that are right around 30, 31 in this instance, even if they don't go in the money. If they get there and they do it quickly, uh, you tend to see pretty good um, action out of the options. Remember, when I do options, what I like to do is buy out of the monies and then hopefully they get in the money or nearly in the money. And if you do that, you're going to see a real big move in the premium um, if your timing is good. I mean, options are all about timing. You got to have good timing. So um, we know that there's enough rooms because we were looking at this back here in around, around 3435. Um, and I'm going to start with the weekly chart and just show you what... Um, what I was looking at, if we click on the weekly and zero in. So this was rallying up towards the 18 week. It was also rallying up towards the breakdown level. And we can see where it broke down from right here. So as I've said in the past, resistance can be the moving average, often defines the resistance, the price resistance, or if you have a really high velocity to the decline, sometimes this happens with gaps as well. You won't get all the way back to the moving average because you're going to hit resistance prior to the moving average. So in this case, I had a higher low, a second higher low, and look at the second higher low. It is a nice little narrow range bar and almost an inside bar forming a pinch with strong ADX condition in place. Also notice the volume pattern, strong volume to the downside. And then as we rallied up, the volume diminished until we got this little narrow range bar with small volume. So we knew we had rallied back to resistance. We knew based on the monthly chart, we had room down to around 30 before we hit any real serious um, levels. Um, and then, uh, so I know if I can get an entry on the smaller time frame that I've got a pretty worthwhile trade on my hands. So we've got the two higher lows on the weekly. So once that happens, we go down to the daily chart. Now, one of the things that I think is interesting here is um, you could argue that we have reverse divergence here. You see this made a lower high here while MACD made a significantly higher high. OK, but even more important to me in this instance is we got a zero line reversal. Do you see how when this got up to the 40, this actually got up to the zero line and um, was failing? Well, it, it actually wasn't failing at the time. It was just rallying up to the 40, rallying up to price resistance, and it lingered hot long enough going sideways and not able to get through the 40. So the MACD were, was able to get up towards the zero line. While that was happening, notice how we have no strength here. OK, I talked about this uh, with the spider, but this is definitely the case here. We had a low ADX condition and a zero line reversal. I mean, this is one of my favorite combos. You guys got to get this down. Make sure you know and be on the lookout for anything that's doing this when you have um, a rally uh, up towards one of the key moving averages or price resistance. Do you have a zero line, potential zero line reversal? So we don't know if that's going to be a zero line reversal, right? It's moving up towards it. 
So what I do is I'll go down to a smaller time frame to get the trigger. So in this case, I have price resistance on the in a pinch play. I have a zero line reversal. I have two setups time frames. I don't really have two trigger time frames. I have two setup time frames this time. Now, if I go to the hourly, I've got a trigger time frame in place with low ADX. And as this broke down through these lows, right around 34 and a half was the trigger to get in. And um, sometimes you might want to pre-guess the, on the options because the premiums grow a little bit. But in this case, we decided to wait for a trigger uh, where we actually broke the lows. And, um, and then pretty quickly, I mean, really within 24 hours, we were, uh, I guess maybe it was two days, we were coming down and testing these lows and we, we had a double in the option. Um, and uh, we went ahead and took profits. So not the whole thing. We took about half, a third to half, uh, as this was coming down to test. I think we took a third. And now we've got another limit order out there to take another third um, if it drops maybe a little bit more, if the option goes up a little bit more. So um, typically when we do these, we're, we're doing um, options that are somewhere in the area of – you know, a month out, something like that. And if it looks really timely, um, I might even do less than that, but typically like to give it a month. In this case, we gave it more time because we figured um, it was hard to tell whether the market was just going to drop right away or whether it was going to linger up here. But this particular index, this particular ETF really had some weakness. So um, we wanted to focus in on this one. Uh, this was the, out of all the ETFs in the sector area. This was the one that kind of caught our eye the most. Now, one of the things that you could do is if you go and look at the 50, uh, the um, RSI 20 and the RSI 5 and look at how the RSI 5 on the weekly got up to 50 percent. OK, and the uh, RSI 20 did not. So I'm not going to show that on here, but that was another factor. And it was one of the few sectors that actually had that set up. So it was a nice combination of kind of everything we look for on these with all these indicators. And then we also had the RSIs confirming. So it's a nice little extra. Um, but hopefully you see how you're seeing three time frames, how you're waiting for the timing. You want to have really good timing when you do an options play. If you, do, if you don't have good timing, the, the premiums drop out of them really quickly. Every time you go through a weekend, you're going to lose premium. And so uh, especially if you're only doing ones that are like three weeks out. So be real careful there. But this is how I'd go about using three time frames. Now, sometimes we get a setup on the highest, highest time frame, the weekly, and then we'll have a trigger on this time frame. And then this time frame will just be a more precise trigger. And I showed that with the three time frame setup uh, last week. In this case, we actually have a setup, another setup, and now a trigger um, with the low ADX breakdown. Uh, notice how this had low ADX. It was nice to see the um, just to show you, the MACD was crossing down through the zero line here and forming a pinch play right before the breakdown. In fact, that happened right after. It, you know what? It happened back to back times, once before and once once before and once after. So a lot of weakness in this pattern and across multiple time frames. So hopefully this makes sense to you. Go ahead and post any questions or comments and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.